Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. Today I have something special for you. So this is a this is a printout of a antique Valentine from the collection at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And I thought what I would like to do is to recreate this using Stampin' Up products. And um and it's going to be a two-part episode. So today I'm going to show you how I make this little bird with watercolors. Or actually, I'm going to use uh, water-based inks for this one. Okay, but same process. It, whether you want to use watercolor or ink, it's just the same. So there is our subject for today. Get that in frame for you so you can see it. But in addition to this, I also have a kind of an unboxing that I want to share with you, and uh, and also something else. So let me let me just get organized here for a moment. Here we go. Okay, just want to make sure I am live. Hi, Kelly. Good morning. So anyway, so there is this very cute little bird, All right? It looks like a dove, and as you can see, this valentine has some, uh, it actually, it has what looks to be a paper a cut paper sort of doily that is cut to look like lace. So it's very exquisite, very fine, beautiful work. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but what I am going to do is show you how you can get a, uh, a reproduction, a convincing reproduction of that in a different way using stencils. So, um, so that's what we're going to do in just a minute. But before we get started, I just wanted to share something very special with you. So um, I got a wonderful surprise in the mail. And this came from Beverly from uh, Florida. And she sent me a birthday card, and I just want to share it with you because I think it's so beautiful. It's really got this wow factor. So basically what she did was she made this gorgeous card that has these die cuts and a little bit of, of either watercolor painting or blender painting on the front here with some designer series paper. But the wow factor is on the inside. And I just love this so much because what she did was she decorated both sides of the inside of the card and she added these die cuts. So this is this square of DSP was cut out of this larger square where it's off centered. And then she used that to put her message in here. And then she used the cutout window over here to decorate this side. All of these die cut floral designs are popped up on dimensionals and it's just spectacular. I love this and uh, and I'm going to use this idea in an upcoming project. The same but different. So thank you so much Beverly. I just absolutely love this. It's, it's a, it was a wonderful surprise. And I just want to remind everybody, you know, when you go to your mailbox or your post office and you get something like this, you can see from the label that it's it's uh, from not a bill. It's going to be something special. And then when you open it up and you get something that looks like this, it's such a pleasure. So take the time to make a beautiful card and send it out to somebody because they are going to so appreciate it. And you're going to have a lot of fun 
making the card. So I just want you to remember how how special that is. All right, so now I'm going to zoom you way out here because we're going to need a lot of room because I have a box. So here's the here's the box that I got. I picked this up at the post office yesterday. I had to sign for it because it came all the way from across the ocean. I'm really excited about it. I ordered this from um, Sarah Humphreys Embroidery Supplies, and she's located in England in um, Clipstone Village, Nottinghamshire, United Kingdom. And you can find her on YouTube under Sarah Humphrey. And after the video today, I will be linking to her um, YouTube channel so that you can see some of her wonderful embroidery instruction on various technique and stitches. So I haven't opened, I've just opened the lid of the box. I haven't unpacked any of the items that are inside here yet because I want to do this with you. So I've got two beautifully wrapped packages here. I'm going to take those out. And this order came through very quickly. It was packed up, shipped out, and got here in no time flat. So I just want to let you know that there is excellent uh, customer service here with the orders that they put together. She, Sarah and her husband, run this business, just the two of them. And, um, and it's just her, her videos. I found them by accident not too long ago, and I've already subscribed, and I've been going through all of them. And she's a fantastic instructor. So if you have any interest in learning something about needlework, I would suggest that she would be the one to go to. Now, maybe I should just quickly show you something first so that you understand why I'm getting excited about this. So as you know, and I'm just going to go get the stamp set quick here. I've been mentioning a lot about the Honey Bee workshop that I have coming up, and I'm just putting the finishing touches on it, and it's going to be a wonderful workshop. And if you want to learn more about it, please go to dandelioncottagedesign.com and sign up for notes and then you will be on the list to be notified of it as soon as registration opens. And there's going to be limited, um, some, of, some of the items that include um, materials that you'll need to make the projects in the workshop are going to be on a, on a first come first serve basis. And I only have a limited amount of supplies. So once you see this thing open up for registration, you're going to want to sign up as fast as you can to make sure that you are able to get what you want. So part of what I've been doing to prepare for this workshop is to do a little piece of embroidery. So this is not finished yet. I'm still working on it. Um, I, have a, I have a ways to go, but I wanted to share this with you because I used the images from this stamp set to create my embroidery design here. So I've used the honeybees, I've used, I've used this uh, floral design, and that was stamped three times to create this, this branch here of um, flowers. I'll give you a quick close-up here. So you can see that there's some beadwork, some, um, this, these are these beautiful woolen threads, and then I've applied some gold threads, and I still have, I still have a bunch to do, so I don't want to show you that too much because it's got a ways to go yet. So I've been visiting Sarah's website for inspiration, and I ended up buying some things from her shop 
And here I have these beautiful little stretcher bars. And look how tiny they are. I'm, I'm used to, you know, my background is in oil painting and, uh, and I'm used to painting on great big stretcher bars up to 40 by 50 or 60. And, and, um, and so these are just miniature to me and, I, and they're absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to be using these to create a base to put my, tack my fabric down onto. I've also got a clamp here. So this is, this is a clamp that's going to hold my embroidery hoop. So for instance, this thing will fit into the top of it. And I know it's hard to see on the screen here, but this stem will attach to the side of my hoop and I'll be able to adhere that to the table with another clamp, which is in here. This is the table clamp. And you can see this much better on her video, by the way. Oh, I got two of them. Okay. <laughs> I got, I ordered two. I didn't realize that this was a set, but that's okay. Because what that means is if I, if I get another one of these, I can, I can clamp it on either side. Or maybe I can use this as a prize in one of the giveaways in the, um, honeybee workshop we'll see but anyway so here is the the table clamp so this is going to go on the side of the table the stem is going to go inside here and that's going to hold the hoop up so that I'll be able to have my hands free so if I wanted to do a video to show you what I was doing you'd be able to see that more clearly Now, I've got a few smaller items here. So here's a beautiful beechwood hoop with a screw to adjust the outer ring. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll wrap this with some um, seam binding, some bias seam binding to keep this nice and smooth against my linen. And then this will hold it in place and I can tighten that up. And what's nice about this one is that it has a, uh, a slit for a screwdriver so that you can get that nice and tight. So you want to look for that when you when you get these rings, these embroidery hoops, you want to make sure that you can tighten it with a screwdriver so that you just don't have to worry about um, thumb tightening because that's usually not going to be enough. And now here are the little things. Look how beautifully this is all packaged. I'm not going to open every single thing here, but these are all the same, I believe. This is a this is a wonderful tool used by embroiderers, particularly one ones who do gold work. This is called a malor. And it's just, it's got a pointy end and a rounded end. And you see it has this beautiful little um, engraving. I don't know if you can see that. An engraving of a, of a bumblebee or a bee, which is Sarah's logo design. And, uh, and I thought that was so cute and so appropriate for my honeybee um, project. This is, this is used to help guide the metalwork threads through your project. 
and it can be used for a variety of other things. I mean, you could use it to pick out stitches. Um, you use both sides, the pointy side plus the rounded side to, to um, guide the metalwork fibers and uh, materials that you use in your projects. This is a needle sharpening strawberry. So this is like those uh, little strawberries that you would see attached to those tomato pin cushions. This has emery powder on the inside. So when, you, um, when you're using your needles, you can poke them into the strawberry to sharpen them up and to clean them up. So um, I like that this is a, a nice sized one that has a, a little loop. So it has a little loop so that so that you're not as likely to lose that and it's, it's it's very hefty it's very heavy it's not like that little strawberry that you're uh, accustomed to this one this one has a lot of material in there so I'm very glad to have that in this little tin I have some tacks so these are brass tacks. These are the real deal. Okay, these are not going to rust. They're much better quality than uh, the kind of thumbtacks that you would typically find at the stationery store. These will not rust and these are used to adhere the linen or whatever fabric that you're using to your um, stretcher bars that I just showed you a minute ago. Then I've got a series of needles here. I've got some curved needles. I don't know if you can see that. It's extremely fine. And I've got some uh, chenille needles, cruel needles, plenty of needles in this little package. And you can see her adorable logo there. So that's, that's the name of the shop. If you want to go check that out, please do. And um, See if I can open this without tearing the sticker. Did any of you do this too? Try to save every last little thing. It's so darn cute. I don't want to ruin it. And in here, oh, I wish we had smell o vision. This smells so good. This is 100% uh, beeswax, okay, so this is used to um, run your, your thread through, so you would just take a piece of thread and just sort of run that over the edge, and the addition of wax is going to help those fibers stay together and slide through your fabric easier, so that's a great addition. I have, I have other kinds of beeswax in a little um, container, but I really wanted um, this cute little hexagon shape, so that's why I ordered that. And finally, last but not least, let's see, these are, I believe these are all the same. These are going to be really hard for you to see, but I'm very excited about these. I've got several different packages here. Maybe maybe what I'll do is I'll, I know, let me get a piece of cardstock. And I'll give you a close up here. These are very, very tiny, two millimeter gold spangles. So I'm going to be using these to decorate my embroidery with to bring this shimmer and shine to my piece. So they're kind of like sequins, except these are actually metal and um, they are each each one is sort of ha hammered into this perfect little shape. So those are my spangles. All right. So let me 
that that's my package and uh, I'm just gonna look real quick to see if anybody has any questions Ginger says, I haven't done this type of work in many years. Me neither, Ginger. Here's the funny thing. When I was much, much younger, um, like 22, I used to do embroidery in a shop in New York. And uh, we used to get a lot of musicians and, and flashy people, and, and I would do embroidery on their clothes. And, uh, and, and before that, back in the 70s, when I was a teenager, I loved doing embroidery. Remember, we used to do it on our denim jackets and our jeans and all sorts of stuff. So it's, it's, it is kind of fun because I still have all that stuff. So it's nice to get it all out again. And I'm just going to move this very carefully because I don't want to lose my spangles. In fact, let me just put them in this bag. There we go. All right. So that's very exciting. She likes the embroidery. Peggy, Becky, hi Becky, um, from Tucson. And uh, she loves the birthday card. The birthday card was spectacular. All right, so now for our watercolor project. I've got a I've got a little scrap of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper here. I'm just going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see. So there's that. And then, as I mentioned, I'm going to be using some water-based inks. So I've got my red, yellow, and blue off to the side here. And I'm going to grab a water painter. And for this one, I might want the little one too. So I'm going to get the smaller brush out as well. Here's my reference. Now this obviously is oversized, but that's okay. That's going to help me to see better. And I've got a pencil and I also have a, um, a kneaded eraser. So this is just a kneaded rubber eraser. And I'm just going to sketch out, I'm going to use the printout for reference. And I'm just going to sketch a quick little uh, version of this dove. And as I mentioned, this is going to be a two-part video, and I'll explain why at the end. But I will continue working on this on Saturday, on Paper Crafting Saturday. I'll, I'll put it all together and show you a few other techniques. I want to get this sized correctly. Now, for those of you who um, are unfamiliar with the kneaded eraser, what's nice about these is that they are um, they can be shaped. So you can just gently sort of pull on them, and as you do that, they're self-cleaning. And they also get softer. So um, by, by pulling and kneading them, you're actually softening them up. You're warming them up. And as they get warmer, you can shape them. So I can make a, a little point 
and I can get into some of these tiny places and remove the excess graphite just like this and I can also flatten it and then I can press it onto the paper and that by I'm kind of blotting up the excess graphite and that works very well all right so now I'm just going to go back in work on my drawing a little more and this is a beautifully drawn little bird there's a lot of detail in the feathers on the wings my head's getting a little too big here so I just want to get that into proportion and then the the breast these light feathers now if you um, do a little research. You can find a nice image of a bird that you like, or maybe you want to use something other than a bird. And you can just um, print it out and size it, and then um, either copy it freehand, as I'm doing here, or trace it. But be, always be respectful of other people's artwork and the copyright. Okay, so um, I'm going to be making enough changes to this. And because it is an antique, I'm not concerned about the, the copyright in this instance. But if you're downloading something from the internet, you want to be sure that, um, that that's not somebody's work that you're swiping. So there I go. There's my sketch. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead. I've got my smaller brush here and I'm just going to begin getting some cut. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to, I'm going to blot it one more time. So this is just going to take off some of the graphite, not all of it. And then um, I'll just clean up around the edges. Patricia says, I have trouble opening the water painters. Any tips? Patricia, I am so glad you asked. These things are threaded backwards. Okay, I don't know why, but the but if you try to turn them to open them the way you think you should, which is um, I guess it's uh, what do we say, righty tidy, lefty loosey? It's the opposite. So turn it the other way and you'll and you'll find that it'll open right up for you. And um, I spent quite a bit of time fig figuring that out when these things first came out. So I'd forgotten about that. I'm really glad you mentioned it. I'm just getting some of the yellow areas established. And this is, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned, this is the Fluid 100 watercolor paper that is available in the online store. And I will be listing all of the supplies that I use today and um, put a link below. So if you're interested in getting 
any of these things, you'll be able to do that um, later today after I upload the video and uh, get all my information on there. All right, so now I'm taking a little bit of green and I'm going to add that to the wing. my blue I'm going to dilute that so I'm too strong And then there's a very pale blue. And there's a lot of water this time. Down here. A little bit here. So I think you can see you can get a very nice result using your water-based inks. And these are just the very same uh, inkers that we use to refill our stamp pads. They are um, very concentrated, so you want to make sure you use plenty of water. And a little goes a very long way. All right, so there is my, what I would call my underpainting. Let me get the beak. And now I'm just going to go in with a, with a little bit darker color and just put some of these accents in here. A little more of the drawing of the feathers. That's a little wet there still, but we'll get it started. It looks like my, I hope um, you're able to see me it looks like my screen is freezing a little bit at my end. Is it is it freezing at your end? Now, I don't know, I mean, I'm looking at this um, 
color copy that I printed out on my printer and and this is from a um, from a JPEG so I'm not really sure what the actual colors are in the original but I'm just going to guesstimate what that piece looks like. All right, we're getting there. A couple more touches. This reminds me when I used to work in the uh, design studios at Tiffany and Company, and we would design these beautiful little images to be fired onto the Battersea enamel boxes and making these beautiful little decorative motifs using birds and flowers and all sorts of wonderful things. It's a lot of fun. So um, this is very miniature. So if you uh, if you're as nearsighted as I am, you may want to think about using one of those magnifying lights. I think Otlight has like a, a built-in magnifier, which would probably be perfect for this. Okay, just about done. I'm going to get the bird's feet on. It's got these little curled up feet down here. Maybe a little bit of shading under here. Okay. I'm going to call that done for now. So there's my little reproduction of this beautiful bird. Oh, I see a spot I missed here. Let me just get a little bit of blue over here. There we go. That's better. Okay, let me see if anybody has any questions. Okay, good. Uh, oh, Patricia, you're from Washington. All right, we've got people from all over the country. That always gets me excited. All right, everybody. So, so that is step one. So basically what we have here is, got a little bit of water on there, but um, this, is, this is the design for the card. So we've got this little central image here, which I'll probably put a sentiment where, where that is. And then this kind of lacy background, which I will recreate on Saturday. And then this beautiful little bird medallion. So, um, so that's what I have here. And what I'm going to do, it's still very wet. So I'm just going to put this aside to dry. And once it's dry, I'm going to cut it out. So I'm going to fussy cut it out. And then I'm going to apply some shimmery crystal effects. So that's this stuff shimmery crystal effects. And I'm going to apply a very 
thin coat. I'm not going to let this get too thick because if you if you apply this too thickly, it doesn't dry as well. So I'm just going to put a thin coat of this over the top and I'm going to let that dry overnight. Okay, and then um, on Saturday when I come back, I'll show you how to make the rest of the card and how to apply this beautiful little bird decoration. So that's my story for today. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing of the embroidery supplies from Sarah Humphrey. Please go visit her channel on YouTube. She's absolutely wonderful and her shop has everything you need to do beautiful embroideries. And um, stay tuned for the Honeybee Workshop announcement that's going to be coming out very soon. Be sure that you are subscribed to Notes from Dandelion Cottage, and I will put that link below. You can also go to my website at dandeliancottagedesign.com and subscribe to Notes, and you will be notified about the Honeybee Workshop coming right up. Thank you so much for watching. Stay well, stay happy, and stay creative.